Today we have a tier list, folks. Folks, tier list Tuesday. It's tier list day. Tier list Tuesday? Tier list Tuesday, of course. Every Tuesday. Every, maybe so every is, Tuesday. Is, is this going on your channel, too? God, I hope. I hope. God, I hope the, sound, the audio is good. Every video I've tried to make so far for the channel has just been absolute dog shit with audio. Um, um, I don't know if we should start in this order, honestly. Is where this, do you want to start? I don't know. I don't know. Let's go with the shortest and sweep list. Let's go with blue. I think blue is a good okay, way to okay, start. Yeah, blue, blues. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. And we can give like a quick description of what each one is, so people at home can like understand. Um, the view the viewers at home. The um, viewers, the lovely people out there watching. <laughs> so blue's whole gimmick is it's it's only like two. Well, it's really only one video, right? Well, it's it's like three videos. Oh, is it? I only saw the one. Oh, okay. He, he has... He, it, the, the other videos are very simple and like how they're... Goose trade. works, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Blue's whole idea is that... Yeah, it's if you a, go to his channel and like go to playlists, he has like a playlist. Oh, well, I... It's, it's like 20 minutes maybe. Of, most of it is just a, a blue screen with the word blue on it. Uh, okay, well, so I like blue, really. Oh, yeah, the blue channel, yeah. deep yeah, blue, yeah. and then blue yeah. channel, Thalassin. Yeah, that's what I, I was going to say. Blue's whole gimmick is about an ad for a new medicine called uh, Thalassin. Well, that's, that's like that. that that's, yeah, that video, pretty much. Okay, what about the other two? Like the other two, it's basically like a, ch a chant, like a local like TV channel oh, hello, that like Ash someone's Gray. picking up, and it's basically most of the time the channel just displays a blue screen with the with the word blue on it, huh. and like, it's not really clear exact like as as any analog horror is like the meaning is ambiguous and like up to determination. It's basically like. To my understanding is like it's it's a channel that's like somehow like taken from another like world or like aliens or something mm. and like have control over this like channel and they're broad broadcasting like some kind of like mind control brain waves or whatever weird I mean, and like, like if you if you sit there and like watch the blue screen for long enough like you, like they take control of like your mind or whatever Mm, like, like, kind of put you under, sort of thing. Well, I think, as a good start, it's it's kind of, I mean, it's kind of like following the ideas of some of these, where it's like, oh, it's aliens. Yeah, and, and yeah, it's it's a good like. I would put it high B. What do you think? Yeah, I would say B. I would say B. I'd say it's a B. It's a good starting one. What if I spent a thousand pegs to rate Kingdom Hearts? Is it? No, I'm not rating Kingdom Hearts. You fuck. God damn. Okay, hold on, Chase. Hold on. Hold on. So. I added some some special things to my stream. What is pegs? And I'm afraid to know. Pegs are my bit. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, because peggle. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There you go. And uh, yeah, was... my good roommate Patrick has currently redeemed a thousand pegs for me to explain the Kingdom Hearts lore. So I'm now going to go through, oh, God's sakes, the plot of Kingdom Hearts according to the Wikipedia page. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this, Chase? You could you could leave. That would be a good time to use the bathroom if you need to. <laughs> that would be a very good you, time. You have a Yeah. You have a, a bit to that just explain all of Kingdom Hearts? Yeah. Uh oh. Twenty minutes later. The world's lost to the Heartless reconstruct themselves as the Destiny Islands are formed. Kairi returns there while Sora is forced to be part with her. Sora, Don, and Goofy resolve to find Riku and Mickey. All right. Oh, back to the tier list. <laughs> what do you want to tackle next? Uh, God, what were we even doing? <laughs> All right, uh, Are you okay? You let's good? See. Let's see. Yeah. We could go Marble Hornets. Okay. Right. We, we can do Marble Hornets. Marble Hornets is, mm. I would say, the OG of like the genre for sure. Ab I kinda think it's like, good. It was kind of like Marble Hornets was its own 
thing back in like the early days of YouTube. And then a couple of years in recent, like, I don't know, the last like five, four or five years, probably this whole mm-hmm. like genre has really become a thing, like a popular thing on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of, it was kind of one of those things where it was too early. It was kind of like before, yeah, it was before it's time for sure. Mm-hmm. Was, uh, and I, but I think it's and, still stands this. I, oh yeah, it, it, I it definitely wanna, heavily inspires pretty much everything on this list for sure. Especially like, to the arc. Uh, to the arc is one of those where it kind of gets the idea of the analog horror where it's some, yeah. some other being making fucked up videos. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like very cryptic, like I'm not, there's a meaning behind this, but I can barely tell what's going on type of videos. I think my favorite is when the two, the arc had footage showing where the main character was living and showing him like in the fire. It implies that Mm -hmm. like he knew that he was going to catch the place on fire. He was always watching him. It was very cool. It was a very cool, I really, you know, I was going to say season three really kind of drags. But even still, it's like you said, it's the OG, the original, easy S tier. Easy. Easy. Yeah, I, I I would say I would say easy S. Easy S, absolutely, every day. I was, I yeah, s- like just like the whole like level of like is this something that could be real or not mm-hmm. was just on a whole other level with just like how far they went for it. I don't absolutely. know. It wasn't just like YouTube videos, it was like, you know, their Twitter or like him like yeah, posting right. on multiple used... accounts that interact with each other and it was whatnot. a big ARG back in the day yeah yeah it was huge it was like a massive like thing that people were had to like actually sit there and decrypt like messages mm-hmm. for like hours and, the and then there was one and there was one message that he he made so decrypted that it took it was like they went for a month and no one could figure it out so he had to just like have the character figure out how to decrypt it himself is like the, the really? comment section couldn't do it yeah that's fucking crazy like the comments like weren't able to do that one so he had to like give them yeah, throw answers. him a bone yeah yeah pretty much i i love the actors too every person in that is such a good character and like i'm not mm-hmm. saying like like obviously they're like teenagers they're gonna be good actors but i'm more point out the yeah. fact that like they are good at pretending to be bad at acting. Like, there's a lot of scenes where they have to pretend like they're bad at acting for when they're recording the actual Marble Hornets, and that's a tough skill to do. It's hard to pretend to be bad at something you're good at. Yeah. I still think about, uh, who is it? There is the two people who are fighting on the in the parking lot, and, like, he confronts them and go like, hey, I decided to Google Marble Hornets, and what the fuck did I find? But oh, yeah, your yeah, champ, yeah. Was who that, was that? Is that Tim? Is that it was Tim? Tim, I think. Tim and the main character, yeah. And they're having this yeah. whole argument and shit. It's such a fucking cool series. So, yeah, easy S. Easy S. Yeah, it has so many, like, layers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's, yeah, it's one that's definitely worth watching for anyone mm-hmm. in chat who hasn't, like, really got into this or, like, hasn't seen any of these. Uh, what? Do we talk about... Do we talk about this on Holy Trilogy? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, let's... Well, it's actually, it would be... That, is that this, the show? No, the Walton Files. The Walton Files, yeah. Harmony and Horror. Yeah, let's, let's and get then, those out of there. Yeah, so I know what you said about Scrumply. Is that his channel's name? I need to find it. I need to remember specifically. Yeah, I don't remember it's, Scrumply or something. It's, it's like something it's, it's close to that. I keep calling it Scrimbalambo. Scrimblo. It's, it's something very... It's one of those... Uh, scrum, scrumplius. Two years ago, he made this whole. Not even two years. How long ago was it? Yeah, three years ago. He kind of. You said that like the person who really started this whole, air or the VHS thing was Marble Hornets. He popularized it. I think this guy really took the concept and kind of brought it to the main view of people in the FNAF yeah. community, at least. Yeah. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. Um. Mm. Uh, you rewatched it recently. What did you think of it? Um, I mean, I I think it's one of like the better, like well done, like Five Nights at Freddy's like fan things for mm-hmm. sure. Especially since it just focuses on the first game, like it touches on yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. That's that's also what I like about it. 
that it doesn't really try to get like deep with it. Mm. It doesn't try to like push it really itself. represents the game well. Like it, mm. it could, it's like shit that could be like cutscenes in the first game mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. could have, should have been included pretty much. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't really, it doesn't do anything bad to change the actual game itself. Um, so you can view it as like its own separate thing or as just the series itself. Yeah. Or as like part of the series. Yeah. So I would, uh, do we put it A or S? That's the problem. I think mm, it's a low would, S high A. I, I would, I, would, I was going to say like high B, so I'll say A. I'll, we'll go A. We can go A. I think it's really good for what, like to start everything yeah. out. Um, but I think I think things have probably become better than what this was. Um, yeah, just like the th the thing with like all like the 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 FNAF and like FNAF related like base things is like mm -hmm. all all like the uh, a lot of like the stuff afterwards has like just so much more like like it's just their own story kind it's more of more original rather than rather yeah like it it's a lot more to like review I think. Mm -hmm. Is like you're also like looking at like how how their storytelling is and if they're just telling something that's already like been done it's i mean there's it's there's not as much to like go off of yeah because you have to kind of make your own world if you want to make finesse of which i guess this could lead us to talking about uh da, 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 i don't remember the name so i don't have the walton files yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i think See, I think the visually I mean, the Walton files are cool, but as time has gone on, it feels like it's gotten weaker. You know? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I feel like it definitely hasn't aged superbly. No. But I feel like, as far as the Five Nights at Freddy's like analog horror goes, it probably is some has some of the most like unsettling imagery like actually in it. Yeah, especially when the in like one of the first ones where they're going. So we should probably explain. So the idea of um, that, that, that we should probably explain all of these. We're really bad at this. The idea of the Walton I mean, files. It, yeah. I mean, basically with all of them, it's like if you if you know the Five Nights at Freddy's lore, that's that's basically what the premise is. Of yeah, them the Walton are. Walton files got shut down, or like the Walton. What's the restaurant called again? It was something fun, funny, something or other. It got shut down and all the animatronics got taken out in the woods and put like into, into basically like a, a, a bunker um and people go out there and have to do maintenance and everything um and like shit happens while they're doing maintenance and it's implied that people were killed and put in the machines because obviously they have to they have to be put in the machines um yeah you gotta put your family in the machines you yeah to. obviously um i think this one Visually, I like it a lot because it's got this like weird, I don't know how you would describe it, um, like felt design almost. Like it's, it's, um, it's right? Like, like you see it through the eyes of a child almost. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I see that, what you're saying. That kind of gives it that little bit of creep factor. I think I'm comfortable putting it at B. Like it's it starts strong, but as it goes on and continues, it kind of gets weaker. I, I I haven't seen like the whole thing, so I can't really speak to like the latter half of it. But like, I remember also important to know Baddington's currently off at college from last I heard, so he hasn't been really able to work on the project. Uh, I didn't know it was still ongoing. It's still ongoing. Um, but that kind of leads into talking about this motherfucker. Yeah. This fucking guy. I know you don't know about it, so let me explain to you what happened with Harmony and Horror. Harmony and Horror's creator, I can't remember the name of it right now, but he made a video about Baddington claiming that he had passed away and was making a video to commemorate him. It got so bad that the Scrumpus, who was working with him to recreate his old series, had to say don't talk to me ever again because you just said that someone died for clout like he like it, it was such a shit show when it all happened he deleted the tweets 
he deleted the video he tried to hide all his evidence that it ever happened but people like obviously Jeez. backed it up because yeah, you know people yeah. are gonna back it up it's online it's always gonna yeah, people are always gonna have it yeah you can't really you just go back on it after no. it's become a thing and it it's so unfortunate because he, I, I do you want you watched it right the harmony and Ori, yeah yeah where i i i feel like it's here that's, i that, yeah that's, yeah it visually it's, it's, it's go ahead it, it's got it's there's like it's got moments where like i'm like all right this is this is genuinely like unsettling yeah but everything it's so it is one of like the most drawn out like analog or is that like it's the pacing is terrible in it it seems terrible it's like the, very slow the only one that i really thought was terrifying was toy for me which was the one where it's like the t kids tv show um and they go to the toy maker oh Hello, yeah toy maker yeah yeah I, that was like actually well done i did yeah. like how they did that mm -hmm. and but, then the uh, reveal of the dog the, the and everything one, the one uh the one doll like the girl mm -hmm. like the daughter doll or whatever yeah like the way like the one part where like she's like crawling through like the vent or whatever and like the jaw hinges for the first time you know what i'm talking about uh yeah yeah i remember yeah, yeah, yeah. you know like how like the jaw hinges and then like the weird like tongue shit comes out yeah yes i remember that yeah that, yeah. that shit that shit was like honestly like i'm like wow i was not expecting it to go there yeah it's just like the problem but, like, is yeah it's, it's just like the pacing's bad it feels very much bad. It's, it's like it's they a did little cheated. it relies yeah it relies on a lot of tropes that the other ones have done mm -hmm. and it doesn't do them as well i don't i don't feel plus the big thing for me that i really don't like is the multiple choices where oh, like you yeah. can because then it's really it's, hard to the, know and they don't really affect anything either no but you also don't really know which one's the canon ending until you have to be explained which then it feels like you're not being part of this world you know yeah if you have to be told outside oh this is actually how it happens then why did you make the other one no you can go ahead go. i was gonna say gemini home entertainment legitimately blew my mind with its pacing with the story it was telling and with one of my favorite reveals of the second to last episode where it's talking about home invasions and not it uh, being about like how to protect from a home invasion but, but how to how... home invade yeah. yeah and it's such yeah. a good twist that it makes you think is this for the monsters or is this for the humans is this like yeah. it's, it's such it's a so... clever idea the one that yeah. I did not like from it was the Mariana's Trench one, but it's just like, I don't have a fear of water, but I'm assuming if you did and you get told, hey, those alien things that can like, so, to clarify, uh, well, I, I'll finish this and I'll talk about what it is. These alien things are underneath the sea that can take your body and rip you out and then copy your body. Yeah, that's fucking terrifying if you're afraid of the water and shit. Well, I mean, I, the point of that is mm. not because it's shown in, in other videos too is that it's not just like living under the sea but like it is under all of the earth's ground like it yeah. has taken over the inside of the earth I think that's entirely. the third or the last one they showed like a, a little guy a little drone thing that like goes underground and starts like, digging yeah I, mm. I feel like the whole like concept of it's like an alien like parasite type species that like infects the earth and like mm. takes the over the earth from the inside and then like slowly infects like the outside and the creatures uh, eventually on the surface it's just like that whole concept is just like, so eerie and like the fact that it it broad it like broadcasts to itself it like uses like airwaves and shit to like broadcast to itself to like mm -hmm. train itself to like take over the planet pretty much it's and the fact that like neptune also takes a big part in the series because the like gemini's like logo is neptune mm -hmm. and i noticed right. like i want to say like in the third or fourth episode i'm like huh that eye hasn't always been there right 
no i'm going crazy that's always been there and like <laughs> as the episodes move on it gets more and more like corrupted i'm like yeah. oh 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 it's such it's such a well-paced well like when i first started watching it too like when it did like the whole like oh the world's most terrifying and or most weirdest animals and then the skin crawlers and the whole concept <laughs> like it touches kind of a mandela catalog but to a better extent just because it's like actual yeah. people I, who are like acting un unnatural uh -huh. like uh, i just i love i really do love this one so much mm -hmm. like the whole like trying to think of it. like the one where they're in like the christmas party or whatever oh right and it shows that, all the people oh, that, that scene that is open crazy. the door yeah yeah and like it crawl it like goes you see like the windows mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it like engulfs the house pretty much it's such a terrifying like experience and that'd be terrifying too because people think that it's gone they can go back to having the party then they like see the walls are starting to shake and the eyes are opening yeah, and everyone's like yeah. oh fuck. my favorite was the video yeah. game one because like first you're not oh, the video under game one's cool where like you're not understanding what it's trying to say and then you start shooting those things and it doesn't kill and then it's the reveal that it's based off the ai that the that the aliens are communicating with themselves with mm -hmm. it's such it yeah That's gemini true. is fantastic if you have like an hour to sit down and watch something you can get through it in an hour easy it's, it's easy it's, 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 it is okay. so well done in, in like every regard mm -hmm. agree um next up uh back rooms uh you're, you're putting it what See? Yeah, I don't. You're I like suspecting. I I'm either C or B. Can you convince me it's a B? I mean, uh, like I feel like the bat. What the back? Like, are you? Are we referring to like uh, what's his name? Like the original backrooms creator, like the the one that got really popular. Uh, okay, so you're talking about? Here, I'll I'll, I'll pull it. Uh... Yeah, I know. Kane Pixels, you're talking about Kane Pixels here. Mm -hmm. So, I think he currently is like, in a way, doing like for the backrooms like concept and like the whole like creepy pasta type backrooms thing. He's doing for that kind of like what Marble Hornets did for Slender Man. Oh, uh, okay. I think visually, like it's he creepy. he. He is exp like, but he is like adding like such like a definitive like lore to it that like mm. makes sense for like what like the rough concept that the internet has come up with. Mm. That I feel like it is in like how s how Marble Hornets really gave like Slender Man a form and like traits that like carry over like to everything after it came out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like, pretty much. Okay. You know what? I'll give it up. I'll give it up. B tier. Jake? Uh, yeah, we can agree. We can settle on B. We'll put it there so we have blue right in the middle of the list. But, like, I, I don't know. I feel like, mm -hmm. especially since he's, like, what? He's, like, 16, maybe 17 now? Fuck, you're right. He's young. He's got a lot of people working on it. It's becoming a big cultural thing. And, like, just, like, the, the CGI that he does at that age is very... Impressive. It's better than Home lie. Gemini or Gemini Home Entertainment. That's true. Gemini Home Entertainment, over they show the monster move its legs. I'm like, okay, that just looks like cardboard. But yeah, yeah. It's, all right, all right. Painted on. All right, A. I think A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I agree. A will be perfect. It's quality. It's also their videos aren't Perso that long either. Uh huh. And they're like, they're the pacing's like really good. Mm -hmm. It. It gets like the story across like very well. Like you can piece it together, and it's not like just like cut and dry there for you. But you can think about it a little bit, and it makes sense like where the story is going. Yeah. And uh, you can either uh, I watch it. It's like, oh, I think you watch it like passively, or like try to like learn more and dig deeper and whatnot. It's it's got that like nice and the unsettlingness of like rooms repeating. But trying something trying to be human, but not quite getting it, you know? Right. It's it's got that weird, nice feel to it. So it's cool. It's a cool concept and like I think they take that concept and like actually make 
something that is worth watching and following. Out Absolutely. Of it. All right, Omega Mart. <laughs> uh, you basically get the say on this because then I'm putting it. I put it B, um, high B because it's not as good as these five up here, but it's such a funny concept. So Omega Mart's gimmick is that it is TV ads like you would watch for uh, like a like grocery commercial where it would be like, hey, come down to the grocery store and get all these cool things. But all the commercials are like the things they're selling are corrupt or not right or they're weird and like very unhinged. Uh, there was one where like it was like, hey, you want some you look thirsty, you want an orange soda? And then they fills the orange soda like the glass up. But then the orange soda gets put in the corner of the screen, and as the ad keeps playing, the orange soda begins to spill out of the ad and onto the rest of the ad. It's like little weird shit like that. It's such a it's so cool to me. And it's it's not scary. It's more just like It's like weird and disturbing it's weird. kinda. Um well it's not disturbing, it's definitely weird though. And I will say, this is an actual location you can go to. That's that's cool. That it's they in, like Go ahead. I was just gonna say it's that's like a cool like way to advertise like their like mm -hmm. whole kind of like weird novelty like location thing. It, it's in Las Vegas and it's just a giant art exhibit, uh, basically with a bunch of like weird different art uh, pieces. Um, the, we Pat that's and I were watching a video on it and like there's a scene, there's a location where it's like the dairy aisle and there's like a glitch in the dairy aisle, so the like patterns are repeating like over and over again, and then the rest of the dairy aisle is normal. That's that's cool. It's super cool. It's super cool. Um, and like you can go in like the back and like there's like a whole back area you can go to where you learn about like the people of Omega Mart. You can learn about like the company that makes other products and what they're actually doing. Um, it's it's not scary, but it's definitely there if you want to have like a fun, good time, um, which I think is worth it. I think it's worth it. I think it's definitely worth a watch. Uh, and then you know what? I took a Mega Mart. You get boys for it. Where you want to put this bad boy? Dude, honestly, like it is borderline S for me. Like I, I fucking love that shit. But uh, we go like we go A. Or I think S. I'll. I, don't know. I, I agree. I think it's an S just because of how different it is from everything else. It is. Yeah, it's so abstract. It's mm -hmm. it's it's not, it's not like anything I've really seen. Just the ideas that he brings to the table are so like avant garde, and like the imagery is like crazy. The yeah, soundtrack is pretty good too for like mm -hmm. how like simply it seems like it's done. Mm -hmm. I'll also say it reminds me a lot of I think it's called Hylix. I think you would yeah, enjoy yeah, playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, Hylix I, style. I um, it's got that same sort of vibe to it, and it just it so. I watched it in the entire time like what the fuck is happening i didn't quite yeah. get it but i kind of like okay so i'm gonna try to like discuss what i think this is about it's about isolationism right it's about being alone kind of pretty much yeah yeah so like uh, there's a dude who does like a, a breakdown of it like really well I, mean, mm -hmm. I think it might be like nightmine or something it does like a breakdown of it or something that's pretty good but like it's it's basically like the main character or whatever having like severe social anxiety or whatever and being like afraid to go out in public and like make friends and whatnot so he just is you know in isolation in his house all the time and it's about like his struggles with like knowing that he's just wasting his life while he sees everyone else like live out in the real world and him like o overcoming his like internal struggle basically with that and like that's what his, I kind of like, got and whatever I I kind of yeah, got that it's... with the with him like being trapped in that hole while everyone else was fighting and he was just kind of stuck there until the very end where he like kind of climbed yeah. out mm -hmm. right I, I definitely you know, like, go ahead you know like how like the whole like where, when when he meets like the angel and the oh, yeah. angel tells him about like the complex like the whole like the complex is an aberration it is like you've created a hole within yourself that only it can fill 
which is basically like how people like have like a mental illness that they live with so long that it becomes kind of like closure for them to like rely on mm-hmm. instead like they of feel like, like trying to overcome like they're they're comforted by like knowing that they have something to blame i guess or like them yeah. living like that yeah and that's that's very common for people um where they uh they kind of like use not use but they kind of no, I guess that's, they use their illness as a reason for their behavior, um, which is sometimes justified, sometimes not. It just depends on the person. Um, but it, it's it's got a nice sort of meaning to it, where like he he wants to he wants to feel good. He tries to feel right, good. right. He, he, he wants to overcome it. Mm-hmm. The way that it starts with him going like, "Hey, it's remember, it's about the little victories in life." I'm like, "Yeah, it's it's absolutely." And then it shows like, "No, it's not always." Sometimes. The little victories aren't enough for people and like what i what i got for it is kind of like all like the other like characters like you got like the main dude that's in like the first episode mm-hmm. and the then like, guy. you got like the the wolf and then like the high licks like triangle looking dude mm-hmm. i feel like they're all like all the other characters are supposed to like kind of represent like emotions that he mm-hmm. has like within himself right the internal like the, struggle of the of the place that he's trapped. What right, the, right. the institution? The institution is just all of his emotions. Yeah, the complex is basically yeah. like yeah, his mental complex of him having like you know anxiety about going out and mm-hmm. being with people. Hey, okay, we're gonna end stream before I get. Uh, thank you for everyone for watching. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, <laughs> thank, thank thank you, Am Dog. Uh, am Twitch TV slash Am underscore Dog. You can find him there. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Watch creepy things. Do it. Yeah, it's fun. They're fun. Goodbye. Spooky season. Goodbye. Goodbye. Boo.